Hi and welcome to another Q3 DXR progress video. As you can see it's starting to look a little bit like Quake 3. The lighting results are very noisy but we'll tackle that later. But now it's using the original Quake 3 diffuse textures. I must point out due to how the acceleration structure and shader tables are set up I can't directly sample the diffuse textures in any of the ray tracing shaders. So I've actually switched over to a deferred rendering model. Using the traditional rasterization pipeline, I output an albino render target, a render target with just the normals, velocity vectors, those aren't currently used. And of course, you get the depth as well. Then I pass all those render targets to the ray gen shader. Let's take a closer look at all those render targets and see how they're used. Here we have the albino render target. It just has all the original Quake 3 textures. Right now all Quake 3's dynamic lights are getting written into this buffer which causes issues and also all HUD elements are getting drawn here which also causes issues. Here are all the normals in world space. As you can see any of the 2D HUD and GUI is also getting drawn in here causing weird artifacts. Here we have all the world positions. These are actually computed from our depth buffer. You take the screen position and the depth at that point, multiply that by the inverse projection matrix, then multiply that by the inverse view matrix, and you end up with the original world position. So for each pixel, we have its world position and its world normal. So we can go ahead and start casting our rays and computing the lighting as described in the last video. So if we take that lighting output, multiply it by our albino render target, we get this. It's not bad, but our bounce lighting isn't contributing the right color. For example, the red of the rocket launcher should be slightly visible on the wall behind it. Here we have the bounce lighting isolated, and you can see that it's all monochromatic. This is because, as stated earlier, we can't directly sample the diffuse textures from the ray tracing shaders. So in the meantime, we can do a hack. We have the world space position where our bounces take place. If we multiply those world positions by the view matrix and the projection matrix, we can get where they should be on the screen, then look up the diffuse value in our albino render target at that point. This has a lot of artifacts though, because not every bounce position is viewable to the camera. We can try and mitigate some of these artifacts by falling back to the original position where the ray was cast and sampling there. Now applying this, we can see some of the red of the rocket launcher on the wall and some of the gold from the health pack on the wall behind it. Of course, this means our bounce lighting is very view dependent. As we go up these stairs, the green floor becomes more visible, affecting how much green can be reflected on the surfaces around it. Here we have the same artifact demonstrated by these ammo pickups. You can see yellow tinges reflected on the arch above them, but as the weapon pickups go out of view, those reflections disappear. Of course, we really should be using the ray tracing pipeline to compute the color of our bounce lighting. But for the meantime, I've left this in here. It's not all bad. You can see this animated material on the jump pad reflecting its pattern nicely on the wall behind it. As usual, all the code for this is up on GitHub. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below or reach out to me on Twitter. Thanks for watching. 